Whether it's Matt embarrassing you in boxing, Alfonso! or a grown man sipping over Abby, Abby! Mies have been the cornerstone of the seventh generation of video game consoles. Today, I'll be taking a deep dive into the development history of the Mies. In order to fully understand the development history of the Miis, we must go all the way back to 1986. Nintendo just released the Famicom Disk Drive and game designer Shigeru Miyamoto wanted to develop a game to draw your own face and even your peers. The game would allow you to move around all aspects of a human face and it would even be paired with a scenario disc that enables you to animate your characters. But not many people at Nintendo agreed with Miyamoto. People ask him stuff like, How could this be a game? And, My mom can do better than this and she's dead. So the development was put on hold. But Miyamoto kept the project idea in the back of his mind and he would soon get an opportunity to revive it. In 1999, the Nintendo 64 disc drive, which allowed the N64 to read discs, was released in Japan and Miyamoto's prototype was approved for the Mario Artist Talent Studio Avatar Maker. Nintendo even produced a short film using the Avatar Maker. But this wasn't much of a success due to the commercial failure of the disk drive. The disk drive only sold 15,000 copies, so Miyamoto still wasn't satisfied. Miyamoto's next opportunity to make his project come to life came in 2002 with the e-reader and Nintendo GameCube. Along with both of those came the Game Boy Camera. So this was produced. This video featured Satoru Iwata, rest in peace, Miyamoto, and that baseball player in the front getting down. Like, I didn't even know Iwata could dance like that. But, Olimar, a Pikmin, and an Animal Crossing avatar was in the back. Yeah, this feels a bit more like a fever dream, and this project was called Stage Debut, and it was shown off at E3 2002. Miyamoto thought this was a final answer to his projects. This is what's gonna stick, and everyone's gonna love this. But back at Nintendo, they thought, although it was funny, they still could not make a game out of this, and Miyamoto couldn't really refute it. Although Miyamoto has tried multiple times and been rejected even more, he still wasn't willing to give up on his idea, and in fact, this story would only work in his favor from now on. Around the early 2000s when development for the Wii began, Miyamoto and his team began brainstorming ways in which his project could be implemented onto the Wii. And on one fateful day, Iwata stumbled into Miyamoto's room with a smirk on his face looking like a devious dog. Iwata asked if he was still working on his face creation project, and Miyamoto said that they were still playing around with it, but they hadn't turned it into something significant yet. Iwata informed Miyamoto that another team had been working on a similar project on the Nintendo DS, and they had been making very good progress. So then Miyamoto pulled a blindside butter beans and switched development teams just like that for a few months. It would be things like that that Miyamoto's team didn't really appreciate him that much. But Miyamoto was frustrated. Not with his team, but the fact that he had been working on this project for over 20 years and it still practically amounted to nothing. He kept onto this idea for so long and he wanted it to mean something and make an everlasting impression on people around the world. At this point in time, Miyamoto had three major criticisms for his projects. Firstly, it would be difficult to make this into a game because it was simply a character creation tool. Secondly, it was great for creative people like artists to enjoy the game and it would be really easy for them to get into it but it was too complicated for the common folk and that may drive them away from the game. It would frustrate the masses who aren't used to using tools like that. Lastly, there is no way to show off their creations. They might enjoy the creation process but it wasn't profitable because people couldn't really show off their creations. But finally, the Wii allowed them to answer these criticisms. The Wii had the Mii channel, which, dare I say, is arguably the best character creator to ever be released. It was a simple avatar creator that was very easy to use, and the fact that you could put it on a television in front of everybody was genius and super interactive. The Wii featured games like Wii Play, Wii Fit, and Wii Party, where the main centerpiece were the Miis, and this made all the games super interactive and made people even more involved. A wise man once said, If you have an idea that you genuinely think is good, don't let some idiot talk you out of it. Now, I'm not saying the employees at Nintendo were idiots. I'm sure they are very smart individuals, but this project meant something to Miyamoto. It was truly important to him, and that's why he kept going, and he succeeded. 